this actually happens again, we could see Tesla stock go up more than 10% in one single day like it did here from the last day it closed to when it opened. And we have now strong reasons to believe that this may actually happen again. Last time this happened because Tesla beat delivery expectations by a little bit over 40,000 cars. Currently, the analyst expectations for deliveries of the fourth quarter are just at 430,000. This is a transcript of the last earnings call. And this is Zach saying, on the delivery side, we do expect to be just under 50% growth. This is a tweet from a few weeks ago. Gary Black saying that no one believes at Wall Street that Tesla will deliver this many vehicles and that there is a pricing issue and possibly a fear of another price cut that Tesla is going to implement. Gary Black here is saying China pricing isn't FUD, it's a real risk. However, we have some incredibly good news right here, everybody. We just got numbers from China, how many cars Tesla delivered, and it is higher than basically everyone was expecting. This is incredibly good news. This safely puts away all of the thoughts and all of the concerns about potential Tesla demand collapsing in China. The Tesla CFO, Zach, projecting Tesla's deliveries to be just under 50% year over year would put these numbers at, let's say, even as high as 486,000 while the Wall Street consensus is still 430,000 at the moment. So this would completely beat all of the expectations if this actually ends up happening. This is why this is such a big deal. There is one number that I am particularly paying attention to, which would really solidify the fourth quarter numbers. We will uh, talk about that in just a moment, but this beat expectations. We were expecting about 14,000, but we got 16,000 deliveries. This is within China, which is very good. If you see this chart thrown around saying that BYD is beating Tesla in China, notice that this says new energy vehicle insurance registrations in China, not battery electric vehicles. New energy vehicles include, that includes hybrids. So I would safely ignore this data if you just want to see uh, battery electric vehicles. Tesla still sells the most battery electric vehicles in China. Certified public accountant in New York City says that it's looking pretty good. I mean, you look at this chart. This compares the first two months of deliveries th within China of each quarter. And we can see that the highest first two months before, that was just 45,000 vehicles. We are now 50% growth, by the way, would be at about just under 70,000. And we are comfortably above that if you, if you include the estimates as well for the few days that we don't have yet, it's significantly over 50%, which is very good. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Tesla said that they are trying to smoothen out the delivery wave, which would mean that before, at the end of each quarter, we saw a lot more vehicles delivered. So in theory, if Tesla is actually going to do that, then we should see less vehicles than normal in the last month of a quarter compared to what we would expect before. So we will see, but so far it's looking very good. Troy now also says that the price drop in, or a price drop in China is not likely anymore. And that of course is very good news. Although he says that there could be other potential incentives uh, that Tesla could offer. One thing that I really like about Troy is when there is new data, he immediately changes his estimates based on that data. And you look at the error rate, and 
how can I look at this and say that what Troy says has no weight? I think we have to pay very close attention to everything that Troy says. So I wouldn't criticize Troy for anything at all. I think his opinions are, and, and also the facts that he provides, are very um, not biased at all. That's my personal opinion. The next big day will be December 6th, when we will find out about the next batch of numbers for China. And that's why, for now, Troy is still somewhat conservative. And the reason for that is because a lot of orders that we are seeing uh, delivered right now, those deliveries happened uh, to the orders that were placed right after the price cut. Right after the price cut, there was a huge influx of orders, even crashing Tesla's website for a moment. And now the backlog has cleared. So next week will really be uh, the big test where we will see, is Tesla still getting a lot of these new orders? Because now the backlog is basically completely gone from that initial jump right after the price increase. And this chart sh just shows how incredible what Tesla is achieving right now is when we look at this chart here. This is Tesla China domestic sales second month of quarter. We can see that currently November is looking to be almost twice as big as the previous uh, November last year, which is huge, and also much more bigger than August, which is the second month of the third quarter. I mean, Tesla is aiming for 50% growth rates, and this looks more than that. So let's see if these numbers in China can keep growing like this. Even if Tesla can just sustain these numbers, that will be good too. But if they can keep growing this, wow. Now, this is going to be extremely telling very soon. Uh, right now, Tesla is offering insurance incentives, but it is planned to be cut in half, in half, once November ends. So if Tesla actually cuts it in half in December, which we will know in a few days, then we know that likely, perhaps, I would tend to think that, you know, that 50% year over year, just under 50% year over year delivery target is a lot more likely. That's what Tesla is targeting. So it would only be natural to cut it just like we are planning to do if everything is on target. But if they are not, then I would certainly expect this to stay at 8,000 RMB, which is about $1,000. So it's not a big difference, but I think it does move some cars for sure. If Tesla actually cuts this in half, just like they planned, I will be even more bullish on the expected deliveries for this quarter. But if they uh, keep it at 8,000, then hmm, we'll see. That, of course, would be in the speculation zone. But if you want if you want to go more with data, then you got to wait till the 6th of December. The next big catalyst to watch for is the $7,500 EV credit in the U.S. that goes on January 1st. We call that the Tesla Enrichment Act. And of course, no matter the news, good or bad, Bad estimates, good estimates. I keep buying Tesla stock uh, because I made a, a video just now. Matt, you're a fool for buying the dip of a 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 dip. In that video, I show you that an average investor, while the market makes good returns, the average investor just matches inflation. <laughs> and on average, a hedge fund manager over a 20 year period even though they might have a few years where they significantly outperform the market, but on a 20-year period, more than 9 out of 10 cannot even beat the market. So I'm buying no matter what is going on. 
And of course, it's fun to see great news happening for Tesla. That is certainly very exciting. Although I hope that I will still have buying opportunities to accumulate more Tesla stock. But this looks like it may be a little bit less likely. And with things ramping up everywhere, things are looking good for next year. Look at this lot. It's looking pretty good. Of course, I would expect a lot of volatility. That is just a part of being a Tesla investor, which I actually like because that gives me more buying opportunities. That's one out of the 48 reasons why I only own Tesla stock in my stock portfolio. Also, it appears that the production in Fremont is streamlined before cars would go. It would be a logistic mess inside the factory. Now, uh, the car just goes into one final tent uh, instead of multiple small tents. Tesla mostly sells cars everywhere where it matters, but there are still some markets where Tesla has not entered, although they are, you know, relatively small, but still there is some room for growth still. One of them, of course, being India, that one, I don't know, that might take a while, but Tesla stock is looking pretty cheap still. Now, with such good news today, why is the stock not going up? It's actually down. Well, just search for China news and you'll see some bad things going on there. What's going on over there right now could be potentially a double whammy where you have production shut down and also because of widespread shutdowns, if that does indeed happen. That would also make the demand go down. So that's not very good. That's what many investors are afraid of. They have quite a situation going on over there at the moment. All of this has been reflected in the report from Bernstein, from Tony, uh, who is actually one of the analysts that you do want to pay attention to. He's not a five-star, empty five-star analyst. He has full five stars, but his downside uh, is only projected to be at $150. And he's the only analyst that has a very good track record, uh, relatively speaking, when we look at trip ranks here than compared to everyone else. Everyone else who are top analysts, they are projecting huge upsides with the number one analyst who is number five, I think, on all of Wall Street. Uh, Colin, he has the biggest upside. I mean, the best person is saying the upside is the biggest. Everyone else who doesn't have a good track record or nowhere near as good of a track record, say that Tesla will go up, but not as much. But the number one person is saying it will go up a lot. So who would you put your money on? I mean, check this out, Tony. I mean, he did very well. This is uh, based on beating S&P 500. He beat S&P 500 by about 5%, which is impressive because it's very difficult to beat the market, especially when you are trading so much and you have so many different companies that you have to pick. You can't just pick one like we can. I just picked Tesla and that's all. And then I watch very carefully what is going on. But Colin, this year, when all the markets are down, his return is over 50%. He's number five on all of Wall Street. And this is the most important part where you really want to pay attention. Colin's predictions and, and ratings beat S&P 500 since 2011 by 40% approximately. Wow. So I would put a lot more weight on what Colin says than what Tony says. And with Tesla repeating what happened the last year after we announced actual deliveries, I am buying more Tesla stock. So we'll see if this actually happens. Nothing is guaranteed, of course, not financial advice, but it's looking more likely. These are 48 reasons why I only own Tesla stock in my stock portfolio. My name is Matt Postis reporting to you from Vancouver City, Canada. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you right here. Thank you so much for watching.